Coach. Uh, good to see you again. Good to um, see you. High expectations, as it seems to be year over year for this program. But with a different team, you know, you lost a lot of guys from last year, a lot of young guys this year. Do you approach those expectations any differently with a younger bunch than you typically would maybe year to year? Yeah, Nick, fair question. I think it's really important that we set our own expectations in-house and, and make sure we worry about honoring those. Uh, again, I'd much rather have it the way it is for us um, to be, you know, expected to do this or do that than I would be to have a, a level of complacency or uh, callousness to uh, our program. So uh, thankful that people do have a strong expectation from us, but at the same time, I, I just want us to be a pursuant of our standards of what we deem as successful and uh, fortunately, we have a group that's really committed to that. That in terms of <laughs> the inexperience that we have is real. Like I know a lot of coaches speak to that, but it's, it's real. Eight of our 13 are freshmen or sophomores. And those guys didn't have a whole lot to do with the, the nets that have been cut. So uh, there's some things that I see in our scrimmages or in our practices that make me uh, think, man, we got a ways to go. But again, I wouldn't put anything past this group because they're quality young people that are really, really uh, intentional about getting better on a daily basis. We've got some sound here in the arena right now. We've got to see if we can get rid of that. John, John, you want to go ahead? You want to go ahead? Um, they, we can have Jermaine or Dave or, oh, there it goes. I can ask if you've got, I've got one. Go, go, ahead, go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. Coach, uh, you mentioned just the standard and obviously seeing, you know, a, a potential where there are areas where you might have a, a ways to go. With that being said, how crucial is it just to get out there this Thursday in a game that counts in the standings where that urgency may be a little bit higher and, and your team may have, that added level of urgency to gauge exactly where you are and exactly where you can start growing. Uh, yeah, Ed, I think that's fair. I, they're so tired of playing against themselves or practicing against themselves that I think it'll be really healthy for us to have a different opponent. Um, I watched Region over the weekend, and they don't look anything like the team that we played a couple of years ago. But I also think what'll be neat for our guys and for our program, like we. We really haven't played in front of anyone since the Lipscomb game in uh, in 2020. They get, yeah, Bellarmine probably had, I don't know, two or 3,000 there, but uh, Freedom Hall, if you've never been there, it's a huge, uh, gigantic venue. And uh, although there was, it was nice to play in front of people, I think, I think it'll be a new experience for our guys just to play in front of fans. So I think we're all looking forward to that. John, John. Hey, Coach. Uh, stepping away from this season and this week, uh, it was announced Friday that Liberty is joining Conference USA. What are your thoughts on on that move coming up here in a couple of years? Yeah, it's a couple of years away. <laughs> so, uh, just from from a athletic department standpoint, John, I think it's a great move. Uh, I think Ian McCaw and his staff have labored long and hard for this, and. Uh, I, I think it will benefit all of our sports, all of our programs, and also uh, raise the, the brand or um, the, the, the publicity of our university, and I, I think that's a, a really positive thing. As it relates to men's basketball, you, you and I both know there's some, some really, really good programs in that. I mean, UTEP's won a national championship, and traditionally they, they have a very strong program when I was at New Mexico, we played UTEP and New Mexico State. So I know firsthand how difficult those venues are to play in. Then you add Louisiana Tech, who's been really good. If Western and Middle State, Florida International, I, I just, and I, I think we'll see firsthand how good Jacksonville State is and Sam Houston, they do a terrific job. So I, I think for us, it's a, 
it's a really, really sound league. That being said, I'm going to worry about the A-Sun and its coaches and players for the time being because we have two more seasons in that. And I think that that league has continued to, to tick upward. So it'll be a really fun, competitive season once we get there. Jermaine. Jermaine. excited about another new season. I have two questions that I could ask them for you. Fire away, Jermaine. Uh, yes, sir. The first question is, have there been any pleasant surprises from your team going into your season opener coming up? Uh, you know, there's been a bunch of pleasant surprises. I, I really love the, the growth that uh, our returners have made. I think our freshmen are, they have the potential to be really good, and they've they fit seamlessly into our culture. So uh, I'm not sure I'm surprised by it, but certainly thankful. Jermaine, you're muted. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How many times I've done this? That's all right. <laughs> you're good. Blame it on me. That's a turnover on me. I'll use some up down. Hey, Jermaine, wait, wait one second, because the other guys can't hear you because there's music in on the arena. So wait one second for your question. All right, you're good. Okay, I was going to say that was a turnover on me for having to mute buttons. I owe you some wind scratch or I owe you some uh, suicide. So no problem. Next time I see you, we'll we'll uh, we'll take you up on that. Good deal. Yeah, you, know, you, you mentioned you know we're talking about the conferences and, and the changes. I mean, it's kind of been a kind of a whirlwind. You, you've gone from the Big South, you've gone to the Atlantic Sun, and now the Conference USA. It's kind of to me, it seems like it's almost like a whirlwind. And say in the past going on roughly five years be the third conference that Liberty has been a part of. Yeah, I, I think, I can't remember who said it. Uh, I think Inky Johnson, he spoke to our team uh, not too long ago, and he talked about it's not the, uh, the strongest in the jungle that survives. It's the one that has the greatest ability to adapt to change. And uh, yeah, there's different road trips, uh, different styles of play, a different maybe uh, coaching and play, uh, playing acumen that we encounter. But for us, we, we have such an emphasis on what we do every day that uh, whoever's on the schedule, we look at it as a, both a privilege and a challenge. The privilege of getting a chance to do something we love and the challenge of uh, trying to be the best team on the floor uh, that night in, in a given game. So. I'm not sure our guys pay much attention to the conference realignment. Um, as coaches, obviously, we pay more attention to it. But I do love the, the way our guys approach it. And, and I don't think this will be any different. Thank you, sir. Good luck this season. Thank you, Jermaine. Appreciate it. Thomas, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Thomas Wilkerson from 90.9 Hawaii. Um, I wanted to ask you a question about the addition of Jacksonville State in Central Arkansas. I understand they're joining the ace for basketball starting this year. What are your comments on that? Hey, Thomas, and welcome. Uh, yeah, both, well, Jacksonville State, Eastern Kentucky, and Central Arkansas are all new members of the ASUN. Um, I, I have watched them on, uh, on Synergy. Uh, really good coaching programs, or co really well coached programs, and some, some returners that I think will give all of our conference uh, members some some trouble. Um, I always like it when the competition uh, prepares you for whatever's next, whether that postseason is just the ASUN tournament or your conference tournament and or uh, postseason play in the NIT and CAA, et cetera. So uh, I think they're great additions and I think it'll make our league much more competitive. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anthony. Go ahead. Hey, Richie, good to see you again. Hey, Anthony, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Um, just wanted to kind of get your thoughts of maybe what your approach to the non-conference slate is, maybe in terms of whether that's specific goals or, or kind of, you know, maybe how you hope to see your team grow from the start of play this week until you get into the meat of that ASUN schedule. Yeah, good question. I, I think, you know, the schedule that you see is what we could get. You know, when I first got here, uh, <laughs> we had a lot easier time scheduling. And now 
I don't want to say it's nightmarish, but it, it's really difficult. So we, we took any neutral game that we could get. And fortunately, our program has uh, had a, we've experienced a little bit of success and uh, got invited to some, some tournaments or some uh, uh, double and triple headers. The one's a quadruple header that I think uh, is, is really good for us because neutral games are what you do uh, in the postseason. Uh, but the rest of the schedule, we just took what we can get. And I think uh, my hope is just to continue to get better, play as tough a schedule as we can, so that once we get to conference play, we're prepared. Nick? Yeah, Coach, uh, going about replacing a uh, Chris Parker and an Elijah Cuffey, uh, how difficult is that? Well, Cuff's our all-time leader in wins. Uh, Chris Parker, although he was only in our program one year, he was a, a four-year starter. So you're, you're taking away, I don't know, uh, 240 games that, you know, it, Drake Dobbs played a little bit last year, but no one else in the sophomore class and none of these freshmen have experienced what Blake, Keegan, Darius, Kyle, and Shiloh have. So that's what I mean by inexperience. Yet we don't really talk about replacing guys. Uh, we try and uh, – have a commitment to being a developmental program. So I've seen growth in the five returners, that I, uh, the aforementioned returners, as well as uh, that sophomore class. And I think, you know, we, I think we'll, it'll pay dividends when you watch us play, but uh, we, we are always gonna be a work in progress. And, uh, but I like our team, uh, and I like their commitment to getting better and playing as a unit. John? You guys got to open up Liberty Arena last year, but now uh, this season, you, you know, at this point in time, you're to get full capacity. Uh, you know, how excited are you for that? What do you hope that this arena can turn into as far as a uh, home court advantage goes? Yeah, John, good question. I, I don't know what, how many games we've won at home, whatever that streak is. Um, and I know football has like the fourth longest home football winning streak, and I think we're somewhere in there, three or four, or maybe, I don't know what it is. But uh, our guys have done that with minimal home court advantage in terms of fan support, given the pandemic and the governor's ordinance last year and uh, just the maturation of our program. Um, now, the last time we had a, uh, an opportunity to make a difference, uh, Flames Nation turned out in full force. When we played Lipscomb for the A-Sun Championship, uh, again, I've been – in Cameron Indoor, in the Yum Center, in the Dean Dome, at JPJ, like that, that atmosphere was as good as any. So, man, if, if we can get 4,000 in Liberty Arena with that kind of support, it'll be worth a few points. Emily? Hey, Coach. Long time no talk. Hi, Em. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm um, curious of what you have talked with Darius McGee about and how you want to see his game grow. I know he's gotten a lot of preseason honors this year and, and just where you want to see him take it to the next level. Well, he's 5'9", so I've asked him to grow to 5'11 or 6 feet. Gotcha, Em. Um, I, you know, he's, he's such a – he's a unique player. You know, not many people can impact the game. Like, like he can with his quickness, his ability to create for his teammate or himself, uh, how much of an impact he makes on the defensive end, the way he rebounds. He's, he's just got, and he's got, a, he's got a humility that, I mean, Liberty Athletics, and I don't know every team's athletes, but the way Malik Willis processes his stardom or acclaim, I think Darius is on par with that. They're such great representatives of our university. And, uh, and for us as coaches, and we get, that's such a blessing to have young men that really care about something bigger than themselves. Uh, so answer your question, I, I just think, hey, Darius, do whatever it takes for us to, to, uh, to accomplish what we, what we dream about. And there's gonna be nights when he doesn't score however many points or turns it over a few times, but I like our chances with Darius McGee on the court. We'll do three more. Uh, Nick, go ahead. Coach, could you speak to the growth of uh, 
Blake Preston, uh, not in inches, but uh, in uh, ability, just going from year one to, to last year and just to uh, – I mean, I, I was looking up his stats today, and I, I didn't realize he had more assists than turnovers last year. Uh, just his ability and, and what he's brought to the post. Nick, did he pay you to give me that? To give me that stat? I'm just curious. Sad, sadly, he didn't. Yeah, that, that's, you should. I should start charging him. For yeah, you should ask him because um, I'm I'm constantly on him about that. Uh, but if you guys were around when he was a freshman, I told you. You know, he redshirted. There's days when he was better than Scotty and Mayo. I think I said his sophomore year, if those two weren't there, uh, he would play 20 minutes a game. And uh, he just continues to get better. Here's what you need to know about Blake. And uh, he's in the room, so let me, let me make sure I temper this a little bit. He'll do whatever it takes for the team to win. He's capable of scoring 20 points. He could get double figures rebounding. If you projected his numbers, if you added the minutes to his playing time, uh, he, I, I'm telling you, he'd be an all-league candidate, if not more. Uh, I think Blake will play for money. That's, that's how confident I am in his ability. Yet he's got such a sacrificial nature, he, he wants the team to win. He's a, he's a terrific leader, he's invaluable, um, and he'll do it without much acclaim. The only negative to Blake Preston and his, is his staunch loyalty to the Cowboys. Uh, it's sickening at times. After every win, he comes in with this audacious, we're better than everybody else, we're America's team. So needless to say, he's a little bit quieter today. Thomas. Fair enough, thanks. Hi coach, so I was wondering if you could tell me, so far in practices and preseason, what you feel like are your strengths and what are your weaknesses with your team so far? Uh, yeah, Thomas, uh, fair question. It's just really hard to tell. Because because when the defense is really good, I'm mad at the offense. And when the offense is really good, I'm mad at the defense. So I can tell you from our two scrimmages, we had flashes of brilliance. And uh, then we had flashes of looking like we hadn't been coached before. So I'm not sure what to expect on Thursday. Um, but I, I do think our guys are anxious to get to that moment where we're not just going against ourselves and we get into more of a routine of prepping for an opponent and, uh, and trying to get better every day. I, again, I'll close with this. I think our group has the maturity to be about the process and not about the outcome. Uh, that being said, uh, I, I do know they have a competitive streak that I think will warrant an opportunity. So. We'll see how it goes. You guys, thanks. It was a pleasure being back, and uh, look forward to seeing you on Thursday.